name of the most beautiful, most majestic, loving reality, I ask you to bless our time here together and to bring to our hearts um, the joy of knowing you and uh, to uh, expressing you in our lives. Uh, Amen. Okay, so uh, I'm also grateful for this technology. It's wonderful. Uh, we are all in different parts uh, of the of the world, I guess, and uh, we're able to communicate. So this is an amazing opportunity. Uh, today's topic is uh, uh, we are built for happiness, living a totally blessed life. Uh, if I were to be asked uh, to uh, to present one topic, so when uh, Sister Lisa asked me to uh, to, to present a topic, I thought, I said, what I would really be excited to share, uh, what is one thing that I would really love to talk about, and, and, and this topic came out, so, uh, so I'm excited to be talking about it. Uh, there is so much to learn and so much to, uh, to, to uh, deepen in this topic, but uh, we're all in this journey, and, and, and we hope we will keep uh, uh, going forward in this journey. Um, so when we look at uh, the verse uh, 51 56 I created jinn and human beings only to worship me uh, this worship uh, if in order for it to be worship we need to to know who we are worshiping so uh, in a way uh, it requires an experiential understanding experiential knowledge of God uh, experiential here is critical uh, because um, we really can't know something we don't experience. Let me give an example. If I ask you, how does apple taste? And you can read tens of books about it, and you can talk day and night about it. Uh, and that's all valuable. That's all maybe knowledge at one level. But if I really am interested in the taste itself, not about the taste, but the taste itself, the only way for me to know the taste is to taste. There is no way around it. Even if you say, you know, it's like uh, this, but not exactly like this. It's so all of these are just um, uh, close approximations. However, the taste itself. So that's why uh, 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 the word here, experiential is critical and we come to know this we come to this experience of knowing the divine through recognizing the divine qualities uh, all around us uh, within us so in a way uh, when we start to talk about the beauty of the divine and you see a beautiful thing a beautiful sunset and you really 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 taste that uh, divine beauty that is uh, uh, that is painting that sunset at that very moment, then this becomes more and more experiential. Another aspect of this, uh, and the one that I will concentrate on, is to become the conduit, to become the conduit for, to express all these divine qualities. In the, in the Quranic way, if you want to say, to become Khalifa, to become uh, agent, vice-gerent, representative, uh, or to become a conscious reflection of the divine qualities uh, to express them in my life uh, to be the place where these qualities are being expressed in, in a way so that's where we will focus on um, and uh, uh, to talk about this so uh, i will use several words and i will try to uh, and uh, connect all these uh, together. So what I mean by expressing the divine qualities is really to become an instrument in the hand of the divine. An instrument in a way that becomes the place where the mercy of the divine is shown, the love of the divine is shown, uh, the uh, givingness of the divine, the knowingness of the divine, the beauty of the divine is shown. And that requires an active uh, the participation, if you will. Uh, that participation is not, uh, in a way, one-to-one -one participation, but participating by opening ourselves to become the conduit 
for the divine qualities to reflect on us. And so, uh, and that's what uh, I call a spiritually aligned life. Spiritually aligned means I am aligned with my spiritual nature, with the breath of the divine that is, that is uh, breathed into me, the divine breath into me. So to open myself to that breath, uh, to become the space where the beauty of the divine is, is being shown. And, and that is, is spiritually aligned life is the flow, is to flow in the divine stream in a way to basically, uh, as we recognize that the bird is reflecting the divine qualities, the uh, sun is reflecting the divine qualities, every moment is reflecting the divine qualities, me too, I am also reflecting the divine qualities. So when I say flow, it's the flow of all of these divine qualities. If you think of this world, of this creation, as a sea that is coming from the unknown, the unknown meaning the divine unknown, the limitless, the infinite divine unknown, disclosing itself uh, uh, in this, in this, if you will, space uh, uh, and us too realizing that we are nothing but part of this uh, divine flow. So when we really fall into this divine flow, then we start to live a life of active surrender. What I mean by active surrender, uh, and coming back to the verse, active worship, active surrender, is really uh, to realize that every moment, every moment, I am called to um, be a witness to the divine, but also be the place where the divine is witnessed, the place where his divine qualities can be seen. This is, to, to be able to do that, I need to surrender my own um, confusion that I am uh, somehow uh, independent and separate from the divine and dive into, recognize that, uh, there is a mirror here, uh, uh, and we'll talk about uh, in detail uh, what I mean by this, uh, that as such, when we become aware of our real nature as the potential space where these divine qualities are uh, actively manifested, then we start to really feel fulfilled in life. Because life stops becoming a life of things, a life where I need to um, uh, relate and uh, uh, interrelate uh, with things, and and, and it, it it starts becoming a life where wow, it's all coming from the divine, and I am really fulfilled by uh, doing my real duty, which is really being a vice gen, being a, repres uh, a representative of the divine, if you will. This feeling of fulfillment is really not different from feeling of happiness. In fact, when we are, whenever we are really happy, we are really in the flow. When I say really happy, like really peaceful, really open. Sometimes, you know, you see somebody doesn't have anything to do with God and he's just mesmerized by the seeing of the sunset. There is actually at that very moment when there is that uh, uh, seeing and happiness, actually the person forgets about himself. So at that very moment that there is that flow. And maybe afterwards, of course, uh, we get confused about what happened. Uh, but really, uh, uh, feeling of happiness, feeling of fulfillment is not separate from what we are talking about. And I will actually bring it to very practical examples in this uh, presentation today. Uh, and when I say happy, I don't mean I'm just happy, but I really mean unbelievably happy, really, really happy, feeling totally blessed that I have been given, or in a way, the the gift of life is here. The gift of life is reflecting on me. Um, so uh, there is a strong connection between 
the life that the divine intended for me to live. That is almost, you can say, what is in my DNA? Or he has intended me to be his representative, his reflection, his agent. That is the intention of the divine. And being amazingly happy, excited, living a most fulfilling life. These are not separate from each other. We cannot say, you know, I'm actually following the intention of the divine. But, you know, I am really unhappy about it. It just doesn't work. Because the, the happiness, uh, the fulfillment of a, a flower, if you will, is in sending its scents all over or showing its beauty. That is, you mean, like when you see a flower that did not bring that potential to activity, that potential to reality, you say, oh, you know, that seed had that potential, but it didn't occur, it didn't happen. The same thing, we have the seed, the seed to become the, 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 this beautiful, like this beautiful flower and show all these beautiful divine qualities. Not show, but actually experience them. Experiencing is in a way also a communion, uh, uh, um, uh, a togetherness, uh, somehow it's to really experience the proximity of the divine without space and without time, if you will. So there is no uh, di dif differentiation between the intention or the original intention of, of who I am created to be and living a most fulfilling life. So uh, the reason I'm bringing this is that sometimes it's difficult to talk about, oh, well, you know, am I really uh, living um, according to how I was created? Is this seed really becoming the flower that it needs? And we can go into some uh, philosophical uh, discussions. But no, no, no. I want this to be very practical. Are you really happy right now? It's very, very practical. You say, you know, I'm not really very happy. And that's what we will talk about today. So when we uh, are unhappy, we long for something. Actually, the experience of unhappiness always comes with a longing. If I ask you and you say, I'm unhappy, and you say, you know, I'm unhappy. I say, if you are unhappy, you must be actually longing for something. You say, yes, actually. It, 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 the, the, the experience of happiness is the same as the experience of longing for something else. And uh, I want to give a very practical example. And actually, I give a couple of practical examples today, and then maybe we can discuss them as well if we have time uh, and add some other examples. So let's say uh, you have a difficult relationship with your child. Some, you feel you are not connecting at a deeper level. That's your experience. That's what you have. That's your experience in the world. And because you have this estranged relationship with your, uh, with your uh, son or daughter, let's say, uh, what you do, uh, what you act as a response to it, you say, you know, I just will do the minimum because I can't stand right now being around my child. You know, when I come, uh, she always disrespects me. Uh, I don't feel any word I say. I feel like uh, I am not wanted there. Uh, so that in, in itself end up in me acting uh, uh, in a way to minimize this relationship. So when I ask the, this, the question, how do you feel? What, do, what are you inside you feel about this? Now, you can say, I'm unhappy about it. Uh, this is completely unhappy, uh, unhappiness for me. I am angry at myself. Uh, maybe I am blaming myself. I am blaming myself for uh, not doing it right. Uh, this is an example. You can be not angry, but you can be sad. You are disappointed as, at yourself. You feel like, oh my God, I, I suck in this... Uh, uh, parenthood experience. I am not uh, the best father for my kids or, or the mother. Uh, this is very sad for me. Uh, or you might say, you know, I am so scared. I am so scared. What will happen to my child? This is 
So we live in, in a way in this real realm of unhappiness in this experience. This world of unhappiness is full of blaming. It, mostly, mostly it's blaming myself, blaming ourselves. Sometimes it's also blaming the other. Actually, they work hand in hand. It's like a reflection. Uh, but deeper, deeper, there is really a, a deep blame. Like there is something I did wrong. I uh, have to be almost like almost a feeling of I have to be punished about it. That that is really there in the background. Uh, or it can be a, a shaming kind of a world where you are, oh my God, I'm so, so ashamed of myself. What did I do? Uh, I don't want anybody to see my relationship with my kid. They will judge me. In fact, I am judging myself right now for all of this. Or a, a world of constant criticism. Criticizing my kid, criticizing myself. So totally, totally a life of, of, of unhappiness. Now, here, if you, if you see, uh, I uh, categorize, and this is for simplicity, you might say maybe there are other categories, but uh, there is a real experience inside of me, and that's how I'm being. And as a person who is being, I do things, so, uh, and then uh, I interact with this world that is in, in front of me. Now, at the deep depth of my being, there is no support. There is only me. Uh, and uh, there is no one there to actually support me, to help me with that. Now, how will we get out of this? So, uh, alternative of this picture is if I ask you, and of course you need to be open to it, uh, we need to be open to this uh, kind of questioning, there needs to be uh, self-honesty and uh, enough uh, patience uh, to, have, uh, to do in introspection. Uh, so if I ask you, what would you really love to have? What kind of world or what kind of, in this case, it's a relationship with my kid. What kind of relationship would you really love to have? Say, I'm not asking you what is possible. I'm asking you, what do you dream about? And this is very different because many times, actually, we stop ourselves from dreaming because we say, get real. And then this is the reality. I have an estranged relationship with my kid. What, what else can be possible? But if I ask you, just, just dream about an ideal, an ideal world that you would like to have. You say, maybe I love to have, I, I love to have this intimate connection with my kid. And I say, if you have this in intimate connection with your kid, what can you do? Like in this kind of a circumstance, what will this enable you to do? If I have this intimate connection and I see my child, instead of giving up or not being able to talk to my child, of course, I would like to guide him and prepare him for life and, and, and give him uh, maybe, this is just example, maybe walk, walk side by side with him, tell him what's, what's going on in, in life, so being uh, vulnerable with him, telling him about some of my mistakes that I've done and, and how uh, I want him to be. So it is... There is some kind of a doing that is related to my dream of the world that I want to do. But when I ask you actually, what do you feel inside? Why do you want this? You say, I will actually, I am longing for, this is a longing type of a question. I'm longing to outpour my love and protection towards him. I really feel that that is what I'm longing for. There is that potential inside of me to become the, uh, all the love I can be, all the protection I can be to my child. That is the longing. See, with every unhappiness, there is a longing that we are looking forward. This longing has different aspects. And the deeper aspect of it is what we are really longing to have as an experience, to be really inside of us. So then I, if I say, okay, if you, is this a happy picture for you? The one on the right hand side, you say, this is a wonderful picture for me. I really, I'm looking forward for this. Um, so I, I, I would say then stay with it a little bit. Stay with that feeling that you want to be this outpouring of love, this outpouring of protection. And 
when we, uh, just before coming back to the happy state, I want to talk a little bit more about the unhappy state. The unhappy state is really similar to this, where we live in this world, uh, where there is anger, sadness, fear, and there is this longing towards happiness, uh, although it might not be conscious, but it is there if we, have, we do the introspection. And in fact, if we go deeper in this, we will realize that all of our longings, all of them, and I actually stress the word all, all of our longings are always cries for the divine qualities to be expressed in our lives through us. I'll stress this point, I'll, I'll go over it more and more, but let's uh, continue with the example. So um, let's say we are unhappy now, and what we can do is basically we can turn to the divine for help. We can turn to the divine for help, knowing that God says that God does not change the condition of a people unless they change what is in themselves. Say, I'm saying it again. God does not change the condition of a people unless they change what is in themselves. Now, when we connect with this outpouring of love and protection and take time to really feel it, feel what it would be like in our heart, in our body, in our mind, we start to realize actually that I can have support in this, uh, the support of the divine, the divine qualities of, of, of tender love, of compassion, of mercy, of wali, of friendship, of tr uh, trusting, of, uh, of protection. They all are actually waiting. It's almost like bubbling up inside of us, waiting to be expressed in our lives. And when we make that connection deep in ourselves and we, are, we take the time to feel it in our body, then we start to say, well, how about me first be this way? And if I become that, then I can uh, become the expression of this love and protection in my daily life. So by guiding my child, by loving my child, by preparing him to life. These are just examples. See now, the being, the, the energy that I find from within becomes what is expressed in my life. And what happens if I start really connecting with my child in this way? I am building the life, I am building the world that I am dreaming about, which is to have an intimate connection with my child. So what we basically have to do here is to take the time to experience that divine quality that we are yearning for, that it is actually there waiting to be expressed. This needs some time. This needs some feeling as well. It's not, okay, I know this, I'll just do it. No, no, no. It really requires my whole body because many of the unhappy, uh, um, unhappy energy, if you will, is stored in our nervous system. It's stored like a memory almost in our body. So uh, we need to stay with the divine, feeling that, are you supporting me? in becoming an outpouring of love and protection to my child and stay with it and then let that bubbling you you feel this tingling sensation sometimes you feel this enormous uh energy in, in in the in the solar plexus or in your heart or in your body that you you feel almost like an energy coming inside of you so we need to take the time to, to feel that, to experience that. To experience that this tender love of the divine, this quality of the divine is actually 
entering is almost like ex being expressed experientially in my life. Um, and ask the question, do we feel that the divine is supporting me in being the expression of his love, of his friendship, of being protective to my child? Do I feel this? Now, when I ask this question, we need really to take time to receive the answer. And when I say to receive the answer, I really mean it. I mean that uh, when we stay with that silence, when we ask this question, many times we will feel uh, the support is coming through, as I said, a tingling sensation, some kind of a knowing, an internal knowing. Of course the divine will support. Will the divine support me to be an outpouring of love or to be blaming myself or my child all the time? Of course he is going to support me in outpouring of love. But this is not information. If it stays in information, we are not taking enough time to let this uh, experience be felt in our body. Because when it is felt in our body, we immediately feel the energy uh, and the uh, spontaneity to act according in a, in a wise way. And this brings us to a very interesting point that we need this constant divine remembrance to realize this life. Now, I use the word here, constant, constant divine remembrance, in a very practical way, uh, which is what? Which is to realize that the divine love, in this case, that's the quality that uh, I am yearning to be expressed in me. I need to be open to that quality of divine love to continue to express it. I need to be aware of the, literally, the breath of the divine, the breath of the divine love in my life. I need to realize that that energy wants, actually, it wants to be expressed through me. And I am opening myself to it. See, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like I am opening the gateway. And that's how I use the word surrender. Like I am surrendering, literally, to the flood of love of the divine but through me through me through this connection through this prayer that we are turning towards god and waiting to feel that uh, and how did we arrive this arrive here by looking for our longings and in fact our longings always will point towards the divine so what will be the result of this it will be a life of Gratitude. Oh my God. I thought I was alone. I thought I was by myself. I thought I was without support. And in fact, that was all when I realized I was unhappy. Because the moment I am unhappy is the moment that I think I am by myself and I am left to my own, uh, uh, own uh, uh, energies, which is limited, which is actually. Nothing, if you will. But when we turn and when we realize what we are longing for, the life of happiness, we realize that the divine is always there waiting to support me to live that life, in fact. Um, so it is a beautiful um, discovery. The discovery that uh, the divine is in my team. He wants me to be this amazing parent that I also long to B. Uh, and sometimes we won't feel this divine support. Uh, if we don't feel this divine support and we don't have time today, but it might be an invitation to expose another limiting belief. Maybe you say, of course the divine won't support me. Uh, who am I? I am a worthless person. So, okay, that's, uh, again, clearly there is something there. So we need then to, what would you long to be? I would long to be special for the divine. What would you do if you are special for the divine? I would just, you know, I'd be so happy and so grateful. What are you longing for? You, I'm longing for this feeling of friendship from the divine. Well, are you supported in that? See, there's always within that longing a prayer for a divine uh, intervention, a divine presence. If you will, a meeting, a, a meeting 
with the divine uh, to almost uh, we we are yearning for the divine to outpour to to um to transform our life but but unfortunately many times we thought this will come from outside and and today what we are talking about is it's all coming from inside it, exactly like this verse is saying god does not change the condition of a people unless they change what is in themselves so uh, to to compare between the two now you might say okay uh, sometimes i go to my let's say you are unhappy between this in this relationship some you might say i go to my uh, child and i try to be nice to him but he shuns me he shuts me down and the question that i will say how were you when you approached him were you really open and outpouring of love almost excited in 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 this intimacy with the divine and oh wow i want to share this with my son or daughter or were you like oh my god will he shut me again oh my god if he shuts me again i don't know what will i do i am so scared and then you go you open the door and there is no energy there is no life there is no light there is no there is fear there is uh, the, the opposite of, of intimacy uh, so your child when you say oh <laughs> I, please close the door after you leave the room you might say oh. so the, the solution is not in changing this by itself because unless we change from within the changes here won't matter in fact we can't even see them because of how we are experiencing from within and and when we are experiencing this it's almost like an energy vibration that we are vibrating towards ourselves by loss of energy and towards around of us by this energy whereas here we're basically sharing this divine energy that we are receiving that we have received that we feel that we are in constant actual reception and exciting to be there now you might not have an intimate connection with your kid yet however happiness is not in having the world you want but in knowing that you are striving towards you are expressing the world you dream to have and this is a very important distinction when we are connected and we are acting according to this connection we know that we are contributing to the life that we dream of having maybe uh, the other side might not be receptive uh, but we know that we are actually doing we are fulfilled by by what we can do uh, which is the opposite of what is here basically here we have this huge potentiality that we are not seeing in any way um so let me uh continue with another example um uh, just to make this point clear because i want uh, 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 an important part of this uh, talk today that i'm giving is to show the close connection between the practical experience of our life which is being happy or unhappy and our connection with the divine uh, uh, let's say we realize we live in a chaotic world uh, every day if we use the news oh my god we become so depressed we say i want to give up you know nothing matters what should i do nothing i need i i i would do with matter or anything and 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 uh, uh, we would feel depressed or we would feel sometimes very angry we would blame the world or sometimes we blame ourselves we blame the politicians or we blame ourselves you know if i did this i did that and, and all of that and, and things of that nature whereas if i ask you are you open to long for your dream are you open to to dream about what you wanted and that's very important to be open to uh, uh, look for what we are longing for and uh, instead of giving up what would you really long to be doing 
I would long to act with justice, with love, with peace, because I am really, I want this world where love is everywhere, where justice is everywhere, where I see these people hugging each other everywhere. This is the world I'm dreaming about. Who would you be in this world? What would you be feeling inside of you? What will you be, what will be your experience in this world? I would feel total feeling of fulfillment because I feel this total peace, total love, total compassion, total feeling that, you know, justice is being served and wow, and actually compassion is higher than justice and, and people are forgiving each other and all of that. So now, again, we can go and turn to the divine for help. Turn to the divine for help and say, will the divine support me in my longing to be the expression of his love, the expression of his peace, the expression of his compassion, the expression of his justice. If I feel that and I stay with that and I spend time with that and I um, marinate, if you will, with that, then I would actually spontaneously become a place where the action of justice, of love, of peace is there. Because I am longing for this world where love and justice are everywhere, where peace and beauty are everywhere. I don't know if I will see it or not everywhere, but at least I know fulfillment is actually in being able to act, to live a world that is true to our inner nature. And I'm contributing to it. I don't know. This is not up to me. But I am part of that. I know that that's where I am acting towards. For instance, let's say you are, uh, you really uh, uh, feel the, the earth crying because of all this waste that's going on to it, all of this uh, mm, uh, waste that is dumped. Uh, and it really, 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 really makes your heart pain, feel that pain. So what will be? You'll say, oh, nobody is doing it. This is chaotic. I give up. It won't matter. You will become depressed or you become this angry person or you become this blameful whatever. Uh, whereas when we realize that, what is it that I'm longing for? We realize that, wow, in fact, the divine, the, what I am longing for is exactly what the divine has put as a program in me. He didn't leave me alone. He didn't leave me without a compass. He put the compass, and the compass is actually in my emotions. All my emotions are sacred. When I feel this depression, the, the being depressed, it doesn't mean I am a bad person. It means my body, my system is working perfectly. It's telling me, you know, there is something that you are lo looking to fulfill, but you are not. You have not been. Uh, you have not been able to fulfill at this part of your life. Introspect and then ask the divine to help you. As the as the divine says in the Quran. Uh, and the friends of the divine, there is no sadness or no uh, fear uh, that comes to them. In a way, it doesn't mean it doesn't come at all. Maybe some, maybe some uh, completely awakened beings and that's their experience. However, we know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to turn to the divine at least 70 times a day, which in a way, in this context that I'm talking about today, it, 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 it makes me feel like each moment we feel less than 100%. It's an opportunity to look for this expansion because the divine qualities want to be expressed in different ways. It's not like, okay, I am expressing them this much today. How about tomorrow? Every day we wake up, is a different opportunity to know a different aspect of the divine. And the best the divine teaches us about himself is by expressing, by 
reflecting his divine qualities on us. Today, this is what I understand from the meaning of love. Tomorrow, wow, there will be maybe a, 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 a challenging ex experience. And you will be, wow, I didn't know that love is that big. And then the other day, oh my God, now I, I need to realize that um, uh, there is no limit to the growth because there is no limit to knowing the limitlessness of the divine qualities, if you will. So, uh, in a way, I would say, uh, uh, the, the life that the divine is inviting us to is uh, a life where we are not defined by our limits. But each time we come to a limit of ourselves, we are able to go back to the divine to ask for help. And then he comes back through our longing to outpour his divine qualities that he promised us to, 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 to outpour. That's actually the definition of being a human being, the place where the divine attributes are manifested. Uh, so in a way then, we can, the way to, re, to happiness is slowly and slowly to stop limit, limiting ourselves and almost become undefinable. Because as you see here, let me go back to this, um, there is almost like an opening here where, where when we stay out of the way, surrender, open the, the, the floodgates, the flood of the divine opens. And we don't know how big this is because this is not of our own accord. We are witnesses actually of the divine, even in, in our lives. Even if we are the active doers, we realize actually that it is he who is doing, and we are, that's why uh, gratitude becomes the automatic uh, uh, outcome of it, because, uh, oh my God, like, I didn't even dream I could do this. Am I doing this? And then we realize, like, how can I, how can I create any of this? This is all the divine happening, you know, in a way, if you will, uh, in, in our lives. Uh, so by stopping this, defining ourselves, limiting ourselves, by, by these limited beliefs. And, and, and once we are ready to open ourselves to this life, the divine will show us actually uh, through emotions, through experiences, through how we feel in our body, uh, uh, the places where uh, we need to open ourselves more and more towards him. And the more we open and the more we become the expression of these divine qualities, we become so happy. We feel so totally blessed. Um, uh, and when I say happy, I talk about real happiness, real, real, uh, uh, like happy, happy. <laughs> I want to emphasize on this. Um, uh, and I want to end with, uh, I think we're already 45 minutes. I, I want also to hear from you. Uh, I want to end with uh, this uh, beautiful saying by, uh, Rumi, where he says, you are not meant for crawling, so don't. You have wings. Learn to use them and fly. In fact, these wings are divine wings. Learning to use them is learning to turn back to the divine so that he carries us. He gives us that energy that basically he expresses his divine qualities in us. And then instead of this life of crawling that we limit ourselves in, we realize, oh my God, I didn't know life is so colorful because now we are flying. 